I made a playable version of basketball in Minecraft with an actual jump ball. Yeah! So this is how you play. First, you got a hopper here. You either throw a pumpkin or you place a pumpkin and a cobweb inside the hopper. You then press this button. That randomizes which item will be sent to which water stream here. Before the game starts, you pick a side and you pick a water stream. And that determines whether you're going to be playing offense or defense. When you guys are ready, one person on this side, one person on this side, let's say I'm lined up for this one, you press this button and your items will get launched out. So if you get the cobweb, then you're playing defense. So you need to quickly grab the item and turn around and you're trying to catch the person with the ball in the cobweb. If you catch them, then the round's over and you restart. But if you get the basketball or the pumpkin, then you're trying to run and you're trying to score the pumpkin in the net. And if you score, then the round's over. To reset, you just simply throw the items back in the hopper, press this button to reset the game and then you line up for the, either the same water stream or if you want to do it you can change it up but the items are random so last time we got the cobweb here what will we get this time we got the pumpkin this time perfect oh and I, I didn't have the item in my hand okay so here's the court you can pause the video here or else you can just follow my instructions this edge right here is 31 blocks meaning that the inside of the court where the, those wood corners are that length is 29 blocks and then this other side is 17 blocks the white is 17 blocks and from the inside of that to there is 15 blocks is because NBA courts are 29 meters approximately by 15 meters. So that's why it's this size. For the three point line, you need to leave a gap between the outer wall and this wall. Then you go five blocks up, and then over one, two blocks up, over one, and up one, and then you go two blocks over. And then over one and up one and then you go five blocks over and you can do the same thing doing the opposite direction here and then here's the free throw line which gets a little bit messy right here because this is supposed to be where the line is and there's supposed to be the circle there so you could get rid of the circle if you wanted but I think it looks pretty good so here you got the one, two, three, four, five blocks again. And then on the sixth block, you connect them. There's three blocks in between them. And the three is the center. And then you got three blocks here. And then this would be the circle right here, the half circle, I mean. And then there's the actual free throw line. So you'd shoot there. Of course, Minecraft Steve is not very good at actually throwing things very far, but he's also very good at running and everything else. So this is kind of just for decoration purposes, and it's as close to the official like NBA sizes that I could get it to. Okay, right, and in the center, which is three blocks, or not three blocks, it's three blocks to the circle in the middle but it's six blocks, or one, two, three, four, five blocks from the three-point line is the center. And here we got the center, where we just have kind of a three and a three and three. But then here we have water elevators, which we'll get into when we're talking about how to make it more functional. 
but that's the size of the courts for the nets this is just out two and then we got one two three four nether brick fences followed by one towards the court and then up one more and then two more so there's three total on the top here basketball hoops are smaller than a meter so I wanted to make this smaller than a meter or like the actual hoop part so that's why this is actually just about half a block to kind of signify that which obviously changes depending on what design you want to do so here we got the one glass pane and then we got another glass pane on both sides and it kind of I think it works really well and it makes it so it's not too huge of a backboard and then here we got a crimson fence gate and a crimson sign, which is probably my favorite design. The only problem with this is it can be hard to see whether something went in, went through it. Especially if you're in a rush and you're like running and kind of jumping right. So that's the only fault with this one. But there's also other designs, which also some of them have problems. This one is easy because when you throw it up there, which I just missed because it wasn't close enough, uh, let's see, boom, it gets stuck. So you know that you actually shot it up there. And if you're too short or whatever, it'll get stuck lower or not even get stuck if you're. Okay, 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 here we go. It'll get short and then you'll know that you didn't actually score. So here are some other designs I came up with, but obviously you can do whatever you want. This one's very impractical, but it's kind of also fun. When you throw it up here, it explodes, but then you gotta reset it up. You gotta, throw, this one's just a, a trap door with a um, pressure plate on top of it, and then signs connected to the pressure plate. So when the pressure plate activates, it flips the trap door and it breaks everything. Otherwise, there's this one, which is kind of a classic design. You kind of just throw it in there, and it goes in, and then you know that you scored. It's got a pretty big radius, though. Like, that probably would have not gone in, but it did. That's the only thing you don't like about that one. This one only works with snowballs. So if you hit it with a snowball, then it works. Here I have it activating a firework and the trap doors go off. This one's a little bit different. This one you're trying to uh, stick the pumpkin in the item frame, which is actually pretty difficult. But there we go. So then that would be you scoring. So that one's kind of like dunking. And this one's the same as that one, but without the signs around it. But you can come up with your own designs as well. Those are just the designs that I came up with really quick, and I think they're functional. This system has two redstone components. One is to randomize the two items dropped in the hopper, and one is to deliver the items to the players. You can see that it's random by pressing the dropper. Here I got a block of wax copper. Now if I press it again, I got a crimson fence gate, and throw that back in there again. And this time I got redstone. And you can see that they're quite, you know, they're it's random. Anyway. So here we have two different designs of randomizers. This one is a little bit more simple, but has a flaw in its design. So here you can see we press the button. And there's two ticks because the redstone lamp lights up and then it turns off which this observer here detects the lamp turning on and then it turning off and it sends a redstone beat for it turning on and then a redstone beat for it turning off. So you get two ticks. Uh, the problem with this design is for some reason it does not work this direction. So it works perfectly fine that direction but when you try to build this direction it doesn't work. So here I press it and you can see that the redstone lights up twice, but the dropper only goes off once. You can hear it, ready? Only one tick from the dropper. 
and it's the exact same. The redstone lamp lights up, it lights up, and then the redstone lamp turns off, and then the redstone turns on again. But I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know if it's because the observer doesn't turn, or I don't know. I've tried building it multiple times in different places, and it does not work that direction. So this one works both directions. So this one, when you press the button, it sends a redstone signal into here, into this repeater, and then it goes here, into this redstone, and it splits, goes that way, and this way. This way there's just a repeater on one tick, so it goes fairly fast through there, and then goes and activates there. Here we got two repeaters on four ticks, and then one on three ticks. So this is the four ticks, that's, that's the one tick there, two, three, four, and this is the three, which is one, two, three. So it takes just long enough that the redstone will turn off down here, and then it'll relight up kind of thing. So you get two ticks. So that's for the randomizer part. And then down here, you can see this is your dropper of your randomizer. You want to leave a gap between it, and then you got a hopper here. This is part of the, this is becoming the transportation section now. So you cannot have this hopper directly touching this dropper, otherwise the hopper will just take items out of the dropper. And I stick it on top of there. And then I throw an item in here. You can see it automatically gets sent into here. But the problem with that is then it doesn't become random. It's just whatever comes in here first goes into there first. So you need this to be separate by a block so that when I throw the pants in there, it doesn't go down. And you close that off just in case, though it should just go into the hopper anyway if you don't have it closed off. Okay, here we have this hopper minecart, which is on a powered rail right there, separated by normal and then some powered so that it can make it all the way across its cycle. So as you can see, here's your button, which is in the center of your court. There's the center center of your court. And then this hopper minecart's one over. You could even make it two over if you wanted because this needs to move over one more, but I just have it do a little kink here. And then here you can see there's a hopper underneath this rail, which leads into the dropper right here, which is facing inside of this water stream, which obviously has a soul sand in the bottom so that it sends items up really quickly. And then we have the exact same thing here, the hopper with the dropper. Okay, and then here we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Rails before we have a detector rail, which sends a redstone signal over to both of the droppers. So you can see that it goes up, around, and over, and then into here. And then that'll activate both the droppers. You need a bit of space between this hopper and the detector rail, because otherwise the item will be sent into the dropper here. But this one, it takes a little bit of time to get from the hopper to the dropper. So you need a bit of space in order for them both to shoot up because if you have this guy too close to this hopper, then only this guy will send out an item. And then it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole randomizer. And then you just have the minecart go here with powered rails and then it'll get sent all the way back over to the beginning and reset. All right, so now this is the, the, the other part is you have your button here, which send a redstone, which sends a redstone signal over to the powered rail that this hot, hopper minecart's on. And you need that in order to actually activate the system here. You could, if you wanted, have one button and have a delay on this redstone line and connect that up to here. I just didn't really feel that it was needed to only have one button, but you could for sure have that. And then here we just have 
the water elevators with the soul stand in the middle so then when the items get sent into them then they'll get sent up really fast so we'll test it out here we go we throw these in q q so you can see they're no longer in that hopper and they're in the dropper now when we press this button it'll activate the dropper twice the items go directly into that hopper and then directly into the hopper with minecart and then when you press this button you can see it drops an item there drops an item there presses the button and then they get sent up just like that and then it works again you just throw it in there press the button both items get sent down press this button they get there and boom so that's it that's the design and there's obviously however you want to color your court you can thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye